that's it that's the uh, that's the culprit just a standard three prong pressure switch that is more than likely the cause of your P06 Delta Delta on 3.6 Pentastar engines. Garbage. All right, so figured I'd make a quick video. Uh, 2017 Dodge Ram Promaster 2017 uh, P06 Delta Delta, the infamous uh, oil pressure code. Um, the code specifically correlates to the command solenoid for the oil pump stuck off, meaning the PCM is not seeing the oil pressure it thinks it needs when it thinks it needs it. It's not commanding the oil pump into the high pressure mode or high pressure side, allowing the higher oil pressure in the engine. So uh, there's a myriad of things that can cause it. Nine times out of ten, it's the pressure switch. And with this particular vehicle, we were able to plug the scanner in last night. Um, and see that the oil pressure switch is uh, the data is false meaning the switch is intermittent or beginning to fail and it's not sending good data so it's a simple three prong uh, pressure switch a little diaphragm I think it's a piezoelectric piezoelectric switch anyway uh, you, you take a peek I'll show you so you can kind of see what all you got to take off just to do it um, the intake manifold is two piece upper and lower you got to take both of them off all the fan dangled breather boots and the bump fascia and the bumper cover the front clip actually has to be loosened that's this guy um, it's you know it, it's not a crazy job but it is uh, a little time consuming a little tedious all right so down there you can kind of you can see the top of the motor um all the the fun stuff that's come up got to come apart so here is your oil cooler assembly there's your oil filter the oil filter canister is actually attached to <clears throat> excuse me the the oil cooler oil cooler sits on top of the block takes coolant from the block and oil from the block and cools the oil so the switch in question is that little guy right down there you can kind of see the brass ring not this one that's your temperature sensor oil temperature oil pressure is that little one down there at the bottom you can kind of see it when i take my hand away and get some light in there okay so it's not this one but that one got to take both intake manifolds off to get to it um, also while we're in here we're actually gonna replace spark plugs and the number three coil the customer did get a number three cylinder misfire uh, intermittent misfire code so we're gonna go ahead and pop those bad boys on those parts are so cheap it's cheap insurance to do while you've got the engine apart so the upper intake manifold does actually have to come off the vehicle to do spark plugs and coils on this one um, not a huge deal so we're going to get new spark plugs in, we're going to replace that coil, and we're going to start going back together. See you in a little bit. So real quick before I started popping coils off, I um, wanted to point out I've got my helper out here finally. She's done with school for the day. And uh, the, the coils, just real quick, I wanted to show you, the coils are, are really, really easy. So the 10 millimeter bolt, you don't even have to disconnect the electrical connector. They, they've got this uh, flexible um uh spark plug boot so even on the back back there you can kind of see them you can kind of see them all the way on the back of the engine i'm just going to show you up here because um i can't really get the camera back there but uh the front wheel drives are in my opinion a little easier to work on than rear wheel drives because rear wheel drives the engine sits higher in the vehicle and they sit up against the the cowl the hood cowl the engine cowl the engine bay firewall whatever you want to call it and it makes the back part of the engine a little more difficult to get to makes the upper intake manifold sometimes a little uh, or excuse me a little more difficult to get to makes the upper intake manifold a little more difficult to remove but you can kind of see so 10 millimeter bolt pops right off and on the back it's nice to, you know with a front wheel drive like this they're flexible so because you can kind of just angle them out as you pull them out of the back so don't be scared to bend them We'll bring in when we uh, get ready to put the motor back together. 
All right, so real quick, thought I'd bring you guys in here. We're on the oil pressure sensor down there. And guys, if you don't have an oil pressure sensor socket, um, they, there's all kinds of companies out there that make them, Snap-on, Matco. You can buy them at AutoZone Advance. Um, I kind of like the ones that Advance and AutoZone the best. The cheapies, they're like $12, $13 because they do the one inch and one and a sixteenth inch sensors. So um, anyway, you can kind of see I've got my ratchet kind of coming through the back of the engine around all the coolant piping. You got to kind of man maneuver the wire harnesses around a little bit there. It's, it's tight. If you don't have the sensor socket though, what I was getting at is you got to take the oil cooler out and you don't want to take that oil cooler out of there. It just increases the messiness of the job. You get coolant oil all over the top of the engine. You got to clean it. Then you got to buy. That's just more seals you got to buy. So you can kind of see I'm just spinning it out. You really can't get it, that thing with a wrench. You got to have the socket. So anyway, we'll bring you back in here uh, when we get ready to put the intake manifolds back on. All right. So we've got our new oil pressure switch installed torque on that is 177 inch pounds works out to about 14 and three quarters of a foot pound or excuse me 177 inch pounds yeah 14.75 foot pounds um it's a general rule of thumb you have to pay attention how that sensor is clocked unless you want to twist the harness i don't particularly like to twist the connectors and stuff around so i i clock them the same way they came back out um, it, this one just so happened to work out beautifully. Um, if it doesn't, you're only going to run it up, you know, another another few inch pounds or so. Ain't going to hurt anybody. Uh, I've got our spark plugs installed. They are preset. Uh, the gaps are preset at the factory, so don't touch them. They're iridium. You'll risk breaking them if you do. So they're installed. Uh, torque on the spark plugs is kind of important. 13 foot pounds, so they're all torqued. The coils are good and tight um, don't snap them off they are threaded into brass inserts in plastic valve covers so caution uh, we've got our new intake manifold gaskets upper and lower installed I've got everything wiped down cleaned um, we've verified our intake ports are clean and clear I've pulled my rags out we're ready to put it together man so lower intake manifold gets torqued to 106 inch pounds upper intake manifold gets torqued to 89 inch pounds so we're gonna get it together get our DTC cleared or excuse me get all of our piping and air box breathers and all that good stuff back in put our front clip back together um, get our bumper or excuse me our fascia and uh, fascia support back installed and get all the fun sensors hooked up on our upper intake manifold and that should be it for this vehicle we'll bring you back in when we get it back together verify she's running with no check engine light all right boys and girls she's all back together with the exception of course of a um, a wipe down I like to take a microfiber towel and wipe down my vehicles where I in the areas I worked especially on the you know body parts and painted uh, painted panels but we're all back together we've got all of our breathers piping uh, all that fun sensor hoovla garbage all connected plugged up verified I do uh, when I disconnect uh, electrical connectors and sensors I like to no flash them blow them out with a little compressed air just a keyword a little and uh, hit them with some dielectric grease so they're all connected and clean and shiny and new we've got our coolant reservoir or a recovery tank actually I believe that is the coolant reservoir uh, it's a pressurized tank anyway it's topped back off um, we did have to drain a little coolant out to move it out of the way um, yeah all right so here we are we've got the trusty Alltail connected keys turned on we've got the everything all together as you've seen so we're gonna we're gonna come in here and clear these these original codes real quick um, before we start the vehicle for the first time since installing the new pressure switch so I like to use the auto VIN detect it works 99% of the time on the all tail there are some vehicles it doesn't 
particular like and boom there you go pulled up the pulled up the VIN so we're gonna hit OK um, it, for some reason Dodges are funny with the the Altel I don't know if it's all of them Altel is the only one I really have exposure to uh, other than the Tech Com or whatever Dodge called it I did I have used a Tech Com a couple of times a long time ago I used to work at a at a Dodge dealership but um, Anyway, the Altels are kind of funny with them, even though it does auto-read and decode the VIN number, which, uh, you know, gives you 85 to 90 percent of the RPO codes the vehicle is built with, meaning it'll deduce, you know, what transmission it's got in it, what engine it's got in it, so on and so forth. For whatever reason, Altel doesn't like to play nice with Dodge VINs. You do have to tell it, uh, give it some, feed it some extra information, like, for example, right here, here we are, year. Uh, you know, we're working on a 2017 Dodge. That should have come up in the VIN. Altel doesn't like to, to do that. Um, another funny thing, we're going to come over here. You see here we have VF ProMaster and VM ProMaster City. Well, the VF and VM are, um, they're not VIN codes. They're, I call them RPO codes. I don't know what Dodge calls them. But uh, the it's weird. With the Altel, you want to select VM for the RAM ProMasters. Um, they do make the ProMasters with the diesels in them, and that is VF RPO code. VM is what we want. We're working on the 3.6 liter um, V6, so we're gonna we're gonna select VM ProMaster City, even though this is technically not a, a ProMaster City. I, I don't believe. We're gonna come in here and diagnosis, auto scan, and we're gonna we're gonna do a, just a complete scan. Even though I know I could go directly into the PCM and clear the codes that way which actually it looks like they've already they've already cleared themselves I don't remember if I cleared them last night or not interesting so you see number one PCM we have pass no fault that means there's no no codes we're gonna we're gonna come in here anyway and just do a quick code read on that particular ECU No, no fault codes detected. Okay. So I guess I must have cleared them last night before I started working on the vehicle today. I did connect the scanner last night and just kind of verify what we had. I, I did a, what I normally do. I generate a report from the Altel diagnostic screen laying out all of the fault codes that the Altel found on the vehicle. Um, and I save them. So I have that saved. But let's see. ABS, it's throwing a, it, this is probably the CAN bus fault. Um, and it's merely because we're connected to the vehicle. The, the ABS system, yeah, can C bus mo uh, mute it for whatever reason. When we connect a scanner to the vehicle, it mutes the can C bus for the uh, ABS uh, brake control module. So that's that's a, an erroneous code, even though it is showing active. Um, I, I have a bad habit of leaving codes when I'm in here. So I always just hit erase, ignition on, engine off. Yes, DTC freeze frame data will be deleted. Yes, that's what we want. Codes have been successfully erased. Okay, and it, it's just, I, it'll go away on its own when I disconnect and cycle the key, see it even came back, which is just further to my point, and I, it, it'll be can't see bus, oh, communi communication lamp signal invalid, again, this is a, a can see bus thing um, with the ABS module, it's merely because we're connected, probably through that code, because I just cleared them, and it was throwing an ABS light on because of the can C bus, so uh, we're just going to hit escape, get out of here, that will go away, and I'll show you on the dash here in a minute, the ABS light will not be on, so we'll just scroll through here, make sure we don't have any more faults, and we don't, we'll get out of that screen, yes, I want to exit, disconnect from the vehicle, and uh, let's start it up for the first time. I'll bring you in here in just a sec. All right, here we go. First start since the oil pressure switch. Fired right up. She's in uh, open loop warm up. Check engine light proved out. As you can see, the ABS light is off. We don't have any SRS, traction control lights, hill hold, no messages in the DIC, driver information center. For, for you Chevrolet people, I don't know what Dodge calls them, but that's what I call it. So, yeah, everything's looking good here. Let's go 
see what the engine's doing. Boom, it's all she wrote. We're gonna run it through a heat cycle, just with all the stuff that I had apart, make sure we don't have any intake manifold leaks uh, or any other codes pop up. We are gonna take it for a road test and uh, maybe I'll bring you guys along for the road test. So, there you go, another job done. Uh, everything worked out good. I forgot to take you guys along for the road test, sorry, but uh, Got a good heat cycle on it. She's uh, running like a champ, no check engine light, no oil leaks, and yes, I did specifically leak check the oil pressure switch. You're able to see it just barely with a mirror and a flashlight underneath the lower intake manifold, so you can, you can see it. Um, you just can't get to it. So uh, one of those little teasers Dodge like to do, or like did for us, I guess. Anyway, we'll uh, call the customer, let him come get his van. Catch you guys on the next one.